obviously uh, have an opportunity to get back at home, play in front of our home crowd. Uh, we've had tremendous environments here uh, and support throughout the season, and obviously uh, expect another great crowd here as we get a chance to honor the uh, 1998 SEC West Division Championship team. Uh, you know, we even got one of the former players works in our building still, Rod Gibson, uh, in recruiting. I also believe uh, Coach Jackie Sherrill's going to be back here uh, with the team as someone who has been uh, extremely kind to me and offered me many words of, of wisdom and advice on being a head coach here at Mississippi State. So excited to, to see him back here and excited to see that team get honored. I know we're wearing special throwback uniforms, uh, matching what they wore that season. Obviously, have a tremendous opponent coming in, in here. Uh, Kentucky, you know, coming off a stretch here where they've played uh, about as difficult a three-game stretch as I bet you any team in the country in playing, you know, number one, number 14, and number 19 ranked teams in the AP poll. Uh, I cannot say enough about Coach Stoops, uh, what he's accomplished there, the respect and admiration I have for, for their program. I mean, they know exactly who they are. They're physical. Uh, incredibly fundamentally sound, uh, running back, I, leading, the, leading the league in rushing, a little, just about 103 yards a game. He is as electric of a back that I've seen all year. He is as, as explosive of a, a runner that will faced up to this point. Um, quarterback's coming off a tremendous game. Leary, obviously, we faced him uh, once already when he was at North Carolina State. I mean, he's got a big arm. He can make all the throws. they got really talented guys on the outside. And then they've consistently every year been at the, you know, in the upper echelon of the league defensively. Fundamentally sound, play with tremendous effort, physical. And so we know we got a heck of a football team coming in here. Uh, like I said, respect, respect everything they're about and the way they play the game. Uh, so it should be, a, should be a great matchup. Hopefully we have a great, great environment here. Again, we're honoring the, the 98 West Division champs. And so... Uh, should be a, should be a tremendous environment and should have great great support here. With that, I'll open up to questions. Coach, after reviewing the film outside of the outcome itself, maybe what were you most disappointed with in, in Saturday's effort? I was obviously uh, go both sides of the ball there. I mean, defensively, uh, uh, disappointed with the execution in the first half, um, and obviously got. Got shredded pretty good. I think I had 300 yards offense in the first half and just never really got off the field other than maybe one drive where uh, we had them, special teams pin them down there, you know, inside the 15. And I think we we did get a three and out there. Um, so didn't didn't execute well enough in the, in the first half. Let the game get away from us too much. And then uh, by the time we, we started really turning on and, and playing pretty good, uh, the game was too far out of hand and time becomes your biggest enemy. Then offensively, uh, you know, when you're without your starting quarterback and starting tailback, you know, points are going to be a little tougher to come by. But either way, you get trips inside the red zone, you got to find a way to come away with touchdowns. Uh, it's very difficult to win, win in today's game of football, kicking field goals. Uh, it, obviously, that takes a special defensive performance, and we were not playing that that well on Saturday. And so, you got to find a way to you got to find a way to convert red zone trips into touchdowns. Do you think uh, there's any chance we could see Chris Parson at quarterback? Yeah, I think there's a chance. <laughs> do you think like, you could maybe start over Mike Wright if, uh, if Will was out, or do you think it would still be Mike Wright in that event? I think it's Monday, and I don't think it's in my best interest to talk about uh, intri you know, all the specifics of the game plan. I believe on your radio show a couple of weeks ago when uh, Dick Buckus died, you had mentioned showing the team film of him just for motivation or, or whatever. Um, I'm just curious if you were planning on dusting off any highlight tapes of the 98 team. Um, I didn't. This, this week at all. I don't think I actually showed any film. You know, I just, it was all over TV that day and social media, obviously, for obvious reasons, what a great player he was. Um, yeah, we may. Uh, again, with, with Rod Gibson uh, being in the building every day, probably give him an opportunity to you know, talk about that team or something. But uh, obviously, first and foremost, number one job is just making sure we're preparing for for what is needed to be done and covered to be prepared to play our best this week. You would hope, though. You would hope your guys 
want to play well and uh, put on their best performance when you got a lot of them greats coming back and one of the best teams in school history. Coach's series with Kentucky has been kind of favoring the home team here the last several years. You know, what, what Let's hope it continues. So, what, what makes it so difficult to, number one, play in Lexington, but also, too, for, for opponents to come in here and get out of here with a win? Well, I think both both places got great environments, uh, great support from their from their respective fan bases. Um, you know, it's always it's always tougher to play on the road because um, you have to deal with crowd noise and potential distractions and and everything that just comes with with traveling. Uh, but at the end, at the end of the day, game of football comes down to execution, right? And uh, which which team executes the best? and puts together a, a full game for four quarters and 60 minutes. And so hopefully, hopefully we're prepared to do that. Anything else? What did you think of Xavion uh, last week, and how have you kind of seen him grow? I think I said it post game. I think he was, the most, he was certainly on our team the most explosive player with, with the ball in his hands on Saturday. Uh, I know he had over 100 yards received. I think nine catches for something like 112. I think was right around there. Uh, you know, first play of the game was a tremendous catch there to get that on. You know, outstretched arms and get his toe down there for a completion. I thought we were had some really creative ways of getting him the football. You know, and not everyone was just on a drop back pass or a play action. There was a couple in there uh, from some unique alignments. These, uh, you know, kind of diverting to Kentucky a little bit, but. They do a tremendous job of, of finding unique formation splits, ways to get their guys the ball. I think that's what you saw in our game plan to Xavion. And obviously, that'll be a big emphasis you know, the rest of the years. When you only get so many snaps, well, that, the way the clock rolls are kind of working out this year, depending on how your opponent plays, too. Certain games, you don't get as many snaps as the other, right? And when you become, when you find yourself in a game where you know, 60 to 65 snaps and a little bit more limited possessions. You want to make sure you maximize every every single one you can and getting the ball in your most explosive player's hands. And so uh, he's obviously proven to be one of our most explosive guys with the ball in his hand. Obviously, it's no surprise you see that in the way he returns punts. I mean, even going back to last year. And so uh, we're going to continue to find creative ways to get him his touches. There was a report yesterday that Auburn knew y'all signs. Did do you think that was happening, or what were your thoughts on that? What side of the ball are you talking about? Offense. I mean, if my recollection serves me right, I think in the first half uh, we had 122 total yards of offense, and that's 4.9 yards of play. In the second half we had 223 yards of offense, 5.9 yards per play. Uh, I think 75, 76 rushing yards in the first half. 108 rushing yards in the second half. I guess I would have to let you come to your own de conclusions and term determinations from that report. I, I tend to hide, let the facts, you know, speak for themselves. You'd mentioned talking to Coach Cheryl, and uh, through the years, your defensive style has kind of been connected with Joe Lee Don. I know that you probably don't have just a ton of time to sit around and think about it, but is it going to be pretty cool to you to coach a team that's wearing that interlocking MSU on their helmet and things and kind of see some of the things that are connected to yourself? Oh, I, it's special to me just to get a coach at this university. Um, you know, I've had an opportunity to be around Coach Cheryl a couple times, and so, uh, you know, had opportunities to sit and listen to him speak about what it's like coaching here, try to soak up any advice I can get. Uh, I certainly hope we play to our maximum ability. If, if the uniform that we're in contributes to that in any way, then let's wear that uniform every game here on out. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I, I probably don't think philosophically or existentially enough to maybe go too deep down that wormhole and make something more of it than it really is. We got a football game. It's the most important game on our schedule because it's the one we get to play this week. Let's make sure we maximize every opportunity as a football program to do everything we we can to control what we can control to make sure we show up as best prepared as possible. Coach, I'm sure when you sat down at the beginning of the year, you, 
you wanted to formulate an identity for this team, and you know, maybe where where do you feel like maybe you've come up short? Maybe realizing your vision with this team, what what are you lacking at this point? I guess would be the better question. Mm. Well, I mean, you want to win every game, obviously. Um, I would like, you know, depending on depending on injuries and things like that, that those are always going to affect what you can do schematically from time to time, and every team in the country is dealing with that. Uh, you really want your identity to be how hard you play, how physical you play the game, how you know fundamentally sound or playing with proper technique and fundamentals. And so, um, you know, I, I believe we, we compete and, and play hard for the most part. I think we can play harder. Uh, I don't think I've – I don't shy away from that. Right? Your, your job as a coach obviously is to, uh, you know, teach them the proper fundamentals, techniques, employ the right scheme, X's and O's, but it's also to push the right buttons that you show up with a football team who is uh, emotionally ready to play and compete. Uh, Right, that's your responsibility, and so I'm. Um, I'm by all means. I am a believer in the in the Truman. You know the buck stops here. Uh, I'm responsible for everything, and so uh, there's no greater critic of of myself or our program than myself. And we got four more games in front of us, and if we show up every game ready to compete and play with maximum effort, and we make sure we have a good game plan ready for them then we'll give ourselves a chance to win every single one of those games. You guys had that uh, tough stretch, obviously, in September, the, the three losses. Uh, just how much confidence do you have in, in the leaders of this team and this team to kind of not let uh, uh, one loss against Auburn kind of linger and, and start you know, another losing skid here down the stretch? Well, I mean, if they were able to, <laughs> if they were able to, you know, deal with the adversity of three losses and come back and string together two wins, then I guess coming off one loss doesn't see it's not going to be so uh, traumatic to their, you know, psyches. I know. I mean, these are big boys, right? <laughs> we, we don't, they don't need they don't need to be coddled. They know they know what it means to put in a week of work and go out and play. And if you lose, you lose. And guess what? You got to move on to the next one. And so, uh, no, I'm not worried about our uh, our psyche or our. Yeah, I guess that would be the right – psyche would be the right word. I think that's what you're leading to. Coach, uh, Seth Davis has gotten more and more opportunities as a freshman, especially with Woody banged up. Just talk about his progression. I know him coming in early helped. Yeah, Seth so – I mean, you mentioned it. Obviously, early enrollee gives him a chance to get into the, to the offensive system over spring. Uh, he was probably the most consistent performer and the guy who opened our eyes the most in, in spring practice, you know, just from a – his performance day in and day out, and what he could bring to the run game, uh, like you said, has gotten some increased carries and opportunities uh, because of Woody being unavailable, and has took advantage of those opportunities. You know, got out into the open, uh, split a long one there in the last game, and has done some really nice things. He he brings a little bit of a feature too, uh, getting the ball out of his hands out of the backfield in the pass game, uh, and so we're we're really excited about. His his development and look look forward to you know his further improvement. Coach, you mentioned after the game on Saturday about a uh, lack of intensity coming out and just uh, struggles to put a complete game with four quarters together. Have you noticed any disconnect between uh, trying out dynamic plays in practice and then being able to execute them on game day? Mm, I don't know. I mean, we, offensively, they opened up the first. The first play was a dynamic, explosive pass play, right? And so, uh, no, I don't think. I don't think. Maybe I'm. Uh, I, I said this to the team last week, so I'll say it here. Right? I, I think there's three ways you prepare for a football game. Right? Obviously, you prepare mentally. Right? That's what all this time in the film room and, and studying your opponent is all about, and getting into your game plan so you know exactly what your keys are, where your eyes are supposed to be, right? I mean, you have to prepare mentally for a game so where you're not thinking while you're playing, right? By that point, 
you've done all the preparation. Now you're just letting your natural instincts play because you know exactly where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be looking at, how you're supposed to react accordingly, right? So you prepare mentally. Obviously, you prepare physically, right? Football is a physical game, right? And you have to ha use the proper techniques and fundamentals and put your body in the right positions in order to be successful because your opponent is doing the exact same thing. And oftentimes, right, success or failure on a play comes down to who physically outmans the, you know, the other, right? So you have to prepare mentally and, and physically for a football game. And then I actually, I believe you have to prepare emotionally for a football game, right? You only get 12 of these opportunities, right? They're incredibly important, right? You have to get yourself worked up into a state uh, that, you know, different than practice, different than practice. And so, uh, and sometimes you can, well, coaches and players, when you watch film, you can see a team who is uh, emotionally jacked up to play and, and you see times on film where it doesn't look that way. Uh, and so I try to encourage all of our players that all, all three aspects that I just mentioned, you have to spend the week preparing in all, all of those ways if you're going to be the best player you can be and play at your maximum capability, right? There's what your natural talent is capable of, and then there's what you are actually capable of, which is always a little bit more. And that's, that comes down to more than just physical ability. And so I think that's more what I was referencing. Anything else? There you go. Hail State. Thank you, guys.